Welcome back guys to a new episode of Shooting the Dolomites. Now at this time around I'm in one, well not one of my favorite locations to be honest, but nonetheless one of the most famous, the Bryce Lake. So if you want to know more about how to reach this place, when to shoot it and the possible compositions, just keep watching the video. <laughs> One of the most popular compositions from the Bryce Lake has to be this one from up here, okay? From the main trail, you rise up a little bit to get this elevated perspective, but be careful because this last part is very steep and very slippery, so pay attention to that. Once you arrive up here, you have the choice to just shoot the house with the mountains in the background, or you can use these trees that you can find all over the place and try to frame it. Personally, I like this one the most, the second one, the second option the most, but honestly, it's completely up to you. But this one is for sure a perspective not to be missed. That wooden house, though, can be shot also from other perspectives, such as the main trail. And well, if there's not much water, like right now that you can see I'm walking along the shore, you can even come down here and try to shoot it from below. So you have actually three perspectives from above, from the same height and from down below to shoot the same wooden house with the boat and, well, of course, the lake and the mountains. Several other perspectives, especially with the boats in the foreground, can be achieved if you get into that house. But the only way to get in is to actually rent a boat, okay? So you can rent a boat for half an hour or one hour, I think. And it costs around 25 to 35 euros, something like that. And that's the only way that you have to actually get in into that pier, sort of, and shoot tons of different perspectives with the boats, the classic boats in the foreground. Whenever you'll be done with the shots from the wooden house, the classic ones, you should definitely keep going, okay? There is a visible trail that goes all over the lake. And after a five minutes easy walk, you'll eventually reach this spot, which to me is even better than the ones with the house. It's very simple, very clean but you get a beautiful reflection of the mountain and you get this symmetrical, you know, the two sides of the forest, which are kind of symmetrical. So you get this beautiful perspective and I love this shot probably even more than the classic ones. Another perspective that I love from this place is, well, if you keep walking after the last perspective we saw, you'll eventually reach, uh, well, they say, this viewpoint. And with a wide angle, I'm probably sure that you barely can see it, but there's like that small church on the other shore. And if you use a standard zoom lens or even a telephoto lens, you'll be able to frame it. And sometimes with the boat, sometimes with not, but it's just beautiful, especially if you get a clear reflection. And especially during the fall season, you get all the, these beautiful colors. And honestly, it's, it's really, really pretty. So if you're around here, make sure to capture that too. Let's talk about when you should visit the Bryas Lake. Now, summer is beautiful, you get the, all the lush greens around the forest, but crowds are just absurd, okay? This is by far one of the most crowded places of the Dolomites. This morning at sunrise, and sunrise in summer is definitely early, around 5.30 a.m., there were at least 
I don't know, 40 to 50 people and between photographers, influencers and just people that love morning hikes. So just be aware that in summer things can get easily very crowded. And so to me, this is a hands down an autumn location. Okay, you get the foliage all over the larches, which is just fantastic. And well, there still be people around of course but not nearly as much as summer so definitely autumn about the time of the day instead well it's a tricky location Bryce because at sunrise now that's the classic perspective all right at sunrise you'll get the sun rising basically not behind you but far on your left while at sunset you'll get the sun uh, setting far on your right so in both situations you get this kind of side light which never really gets into the mountains and i don't know i i'm not fond neither of sunrise nor sunset to be honest if i have to recommend one time of the day i would pick sunrise just because of fewer people around and still but let's say light wise there's not really a best time of the day. Either sunrise or sunset will be fine. Generally sunrise, the water is also calmer, okay? So if you wanna, if you're looking for a reflection, probably that's the time of the day you should be here. Reaching the Bryas Lake is very, very simple. All you have to do is put the name of the lake in your GPS and you'll eventually reach one of the several parking spots. And from the parking spots, there will be a couple of peanuts to walk and you'll arrive eventually at the start of the lake. And from there, you can just walk around all over uh, the place. So it's very, very easy. As I told you at the beginning of the video, the Bryce Lake is not one of my favorite locations of the Dolomites. Very, very crowded, very, very popular, and it's hard to get out of those classic compositions. Nonetheless, if you are around here, make sure to pay a visit because the lake itself is just beautiful. The only recommendations that I can give you before wrapping things up is to come in autumn. You'll enjoy this place 10 times more, trust me. Fewer people around, and beautiful foliage colors so you get the best of both make sure to come in autumn so i hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time